and welcome to Donna Dan's Toxic Masculinity Podcast. Uh, today we have the distinct pleasure of having the world's smallest Navy SEAL. He holds the record for being the shortest Your dick. In, 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 the, in the history of the SEALs. And I uh, barely made the, uh, can you reach above this this uh, line here, you know, Um Ray Cash Care. Welcome, sir. <laughs> well, thank you and fuck you all in one, sir. It's, a, it's an honor. It's an honor to be here. You know, obviously, gentlemen, I'm a, you, we've talked. I'm a huge fan. Um, and, yeah, I'm still a little nervous about last night when you started the, the small jokes. Yeah, I told everybody, you know, I, I actually told Don Fry to go fuck himself. And I didn't know how that was going to go. I actually told my wife. And not too bad, you know, so I'm still here. So thank you. Thank you for having me. No, I actually think that's what the, the fans should actually uh, know that, that we had a chance to visit last night and get a chance to know each other just a little bit. And uh, there's a lot of common uh, camaraderie that we have. Maybe uh, being amateur wrestlers, backgrounds, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, just uh, I think that we a lot of the same mindset as well. Do you? You don't think you wrestled in the same caliber as me. Well, I mean, I, no, no, I would say, but being involved, there is something, no, there is a camaraderie that, uh, of the sport of Yeah, there is. There, there's is. definitely, there's a different mindset. Yeah. Uh, I've yet, I've traveled all over the United States, all over the world, and I've met other wrestlers, and there is, there is a bond. Whether you speak their language or, or not, there is a bond. And you guys do shit really cool here, too, because, like, last night I came in, we ate dinner together. Broke bread. We, yeah, we hung out for hours. Um, you talked shit about me most of the night, showed me a whole bunch of, Cool stuff. We'll leave it at that. Uh, and um, but people don't do that, right? I was like, you opened up your home. I mean, you got a beautiful house here. It's amazing. Thanks, thanks, yeah. Obviously, you know, you were did well back in your day. Good shit. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm so pumped to be here and a uh, little nervous, you know, because you guys. I, I know there's not a huge age difference. And I said this yesterday because I remember I said to you, I was like, when I was growing up, I was watching. You're like, how the fuck old are you? Like, <laughs> I, you know, but I was younger, it, right? It is what it is. I mean, it's, we cannot turn back the clock of time. We simply have to uh, continue to forge on. That's, yeah. that's how I simply look at it. That each day we get up and we uh, we uh, attack our day like we 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 do normally. Just as one gets a little older, we might do it at a little slower pace. That okay. is such. A cool emblem, man. You better send me a coffee cup and a, and a, and a glass. Tell me about that, man. So, That's radical. So this is actually something I do. I work with uh, Bedros Koulian. So Bedros Koulian is the founder of Fit Body Boot Camp, gazillionaire, but he's a, he's a great guy, right? He's my boss. He's my friend. And we started a business. It's a course called The Project. So it's a 75-hour fully immersive course. We do five courses a year. Um, there is a price tag on it, right? But what we do is it's – physical, mental, and emotional course. So as you know, wrestling is a physical course. Fighting is a, a physical course, but it's also a, a mental and emotional course. You have to have discipline. You have to have strength. You have to have courage. You have to put the fuck out, right? With yes. everything you're doing. And that's what we're making people do. Men, 21 or older, they have to come to Chino Hills and for 75 hours, we break them down and we rebuild them and we create growth. And there's six forms of growth, physical, mental, emotional, social, spiritual, and financial growth, right? And obviously, I were, I have my, we're all subject matter experts in what we do. I focus on my zone of genius. Pedro's Coolian focuses on like finances in this, but it's a lifelong brotherhood, right? It's not like one of these damn courses that you go to, you pay your money, and when you're done, you're done. It's just like the Navy SEALs, right? You graduate BUDS, basic underwater demolition. Eventually, you get your trident. That's when the work starts. So once you graduate the course, that's where we do weekly accountabilities like you would if you were my dive buddy you're stuck with me for the rest of your fucking yeah. life yeah we know how that would go <laughs> yeah. but and that's what we're trying to do we're trying to create a new civilization of men when we had a long conversation yeah, about this about last men, night yeah yes, yes about how men used to be civilized servants right obviously we both know if you guys got to throw down you can throw down I, I get it right i'm humbled by your presence but you're also servants right fathers um, Care, caretakers caretakers yes. right it's it's more than just like samurai yeah it's more than just your one fight that you did Dom, when you beat the shit out of what was his name again uh, Yoshihiro yeah Nakayama. there you go i can't say that but wow what a fight but i got lucky that yeah that camaraderie and it's fight. just about being the whole complete package better father better husband yeah. better human being and that's what we're doing and it's it's a passion of mine it's one of the three programs that i i have the privilege to work for um under Pedro's Cooling. Well, let me stop you right there. Yeah. Okay, what do you think is 
What do you think is causing some of the breakdown inside the United States? I mean, I've got my own opinion. I know Don has this, but I'm just kind of curious as to what do you think is causing this breakdown of the family unit of of the American male that it once was, mm -hmm. that has become a more and more of an extinct species mm -hmm. that maybe we have to only go down to the Smithsonian Institute to see every now and then when it's behind glass. Mm -hmm. you know, you know it, it's funny. I, I, I think it stems from a couple things. Number one, pardon my life, fucking iPhones and, and Androids, right? These phones, these these platforms where everybody's a keyboard warrior. You get it, I get it, um, everybody gets it. Video games. I didn't come, I didn't grow up with much. If I literally, I wanted to get the hell out of the house and go do what boys do, get in trouble, chase girls, get in fights, right? And we talked about this last night. What do I think the world needs more of today? Men need to get punched in the face really fucking hard. Yeah. They do. Knock I mean, their ass. They do. And it's the thing because there's, the problem with society is, is nobody's held accountable. Yeah. For their actions, it's like, you know, we were talking about the trolls and the things on the Instagram. Yeah. People say horrible things, just ignore them. No, I'm not going to ignore them. I, I'm not going to, I, I know sometimes there are, but certain things I won't, like in, in life. I'm going to throw back that, that, that age-old adage that you used to always say, uh, sticks and stones may break your bones, but names will never hurt you. But we do, we live in a very soft society nowadays. I mean, paper thin uh, emotions to where it's like, oh. He hurt my feelings. Oh my god, it's it's crazy. You know, like now everybody makes these these, these things called go funds, right? Let's raise money because I twisted my ankle. You know, I had a go fund. It was called a paper route or a lawnmower. Get your ass to work. I so, so I, just by the, this again, the short conversation we're having right now, I, the thought of so you you're really not uh, would be big on per se participation ribbons. No, no, <laughs> I I do not. I don't believe in that. I believe that you're either first, second, or third. Like. I, I actually want to be the guy that stands there with the little rubber stamp with the L. And this, this goes, loser, loser, <laughs> loser. And they give out. I live in a world of competition. There's only the gold, the silver, and the bronze. That's yeah. it. And Everyone the, else was, yeah, you were there. Yeah, I mean, what is 14th place? What is that, like a burnt sienna color? What the fuck color is that? You know, what, what is that? There's, that's the thing. Fuchsia. Yeah, people, that's the thing. There needs to be the distinction between people who, you know, who work for it, right? We talked about it earlier. You know, one of the questions, my daughter, she's a gymnast. You're, you either get first in the state, second in the state, third in the state. This 14th in state, that, that doesn't mean anything. What uh, events did your daughter participate So in? she has, to, at this young age, she has to compete in, I gotta make sure I get this right, floor, vault, Better, yeah. <laughs> floor, vault, bars, and beam. Um, and... She's in level seven now. She's been doing gymnastics since she's 12. She's been doing gymnastics since she was five. Um, and she's won first overall state champion when she was at level three. In each event, she took the number one in the state. And then since then, she's placed in certain categories first in state. But the one year, she took first in everything. And that's, wow. you know, that, that's she, she, she took home one of these, Don. Yeah, Not those, great. but yeah, she took it home. And... And I'll tell you, it it comes with a price, right? I mean, the the hands were you know torn up and the long hours and the pain, and that's what I think the world needs to understand. Like, I'll give you an example, right? You guys were kind of successful at what you did. <laughs> I can't say it with a straight just, face, just a little bit, just yeah. A little bit. But you guys trained hard. I mean, I went down to your barn yesterday and I saw your bags. I would not want to be one of those bags. I mean, literally, it looked like your fist were imprinted in those things, right? I think what the world needs to understand is is this new age, you just need to get up and create movement. You need to do something. I tell people, get out, walk, exercise, and you know, don't be afraid <laughs> to try new things. Cause that's the thing. People are so content with sitting around playing video games and you know, you're not a UFC fighter if you play a UFC fighter game. You're not. Right. You're not a right. you're not a Navy right. SEAL if you play Call of Duty. You if you want it, go get it, right? That's well, I can again, say I, some of the conversation we had uh, even yesterday when we talked about go go out to the local shopping mall mm -hmm. and just do a quick 360. Mm. Try to find the one person that does not have a cell phone in their hand, or they're walking down the sidewalk and they're looking down and they, they run into something. Oh, exactly. oh my god, it happens all the time. I laugh at people. You see all these, like, well, but they even have shows now that like funny, blo funny like blo bloopers <laughs> stuff like that because they do it exactly what you said. They walk down, they're hitting a, a sign, or they're walking into a, a mailbox or something of that, of that nature. I mean, it's uh, people are so influenced. Well, again, 
state by state, how many people are getting automobile accidents because they're oh. texting, talking, I tell you what, watching. True, true story, uh, about six months ago, me and my wife were driving, we're going to dinner. I couldn't make this up if I tried. There was a lady driving down the highway, driving down the highway with a, a book. Not even looking at the fucking road, driving. And we were like, what the? She just reading a book. Look, and I'm like beeping the horn. She looks at me like, I yeah, yeah, am out yeah, of my so, mind. I'm like, yeah. you are reading. But I really think the... If you I really, actually have to commend her, though. She was actually reading a real book. Well, at least book. a book, yeah. yeah but exactly. I just I think there's a time and place for everything, sir. Um, you know, like, holy shit, you know. If I'm taking a deuce, I'll pull a book out, you know. But not uh, oh, audio on. audio book, right? Oh, audio. There you go. Come on, there don't you go. go. Like you never masturbated while you're driving down the road now. <laughs> you know, I, I have. <laughs> Without using your hands, even. <laughs> well, that's a whole different story. But no, I just, I think a lot of people that get, you know, you know the world, everybody's called an influencer. And people that look up to influencers, I think people just need to be more happy. More selective. More so, Yeah, no shit. And more content with their life. You know, like when we were kids, well, I, I know I'm, you're older than me, but we didn't have phones. And I didn't have an issue with that. I didn't go, God, I wish there was a way I could put my face down and look at something all day long. I mean, the phone's great. I can look at porn whenever I want. That's great, right? Back right. in the day, you had to put in the big B, uh, VHS or the beta yeah. and, you know, and hit rewind and it took forever but nowadays make sure, make sure, clear the house make sure nobody's there <laughs> exactly you know nowadays my wife gets on my damn phone she's like what the hell i'm like oh i don't know how that got there you know yeah. but now but i people need to just be more active and that's what i think people need to do i agree I, i'm going to go back to like the cell phone we talk about kids and cell phones because i see kids that are like i mean they're so young they, they have no concept of really what that phone is other than it's something that will entertain <laughs> them but uh, like my uh, youngest son, he wanted a cell phone at a very young age. And I go, you don't need one. He goes, well, but all my friends are. I go, I don't care if your friends have phone. You don't need one. I said, right now, I said, y your, your ass is being carted around by mom or dad. Mm -hmm. We're dropping you off at, at this home, and we know that parent, and we have that parent's home phone number when they used to actually have phones in their homes, mm -hmm. or we have their cell number. We know how to get in contact with you. Once you become mobile, once you start driving mm -hmm. down the road, oh, you'll have a cell phone, so a cell phone then because it also comes with a GPS. So when you tell us where you're going, it better be where you're going because we can also check that yeah. GPS. And I know. also know how to install GPSs on cars so they're not detected. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, well, again, that's where it's just kind of cool things where you... you Kids can't get away with hardly anything anymore. I agree. You know, and that's the thing. Like, back in the day, think about it. Like, think about Let's go back to back in time. You and I didn't had an issue with each other, right? We talked about it. So we go outside. We try to talk about it like men. If it can't be handled like men, we beat the shit out of each other. We beat the shit out of each other. And then after that, hopefully it's done with. It's done with. That's it. Nowadays, like I said, you'll see people dying in accidents. And what are people doing? No one's helping. What are they doing? They're filming. Right, right. Yes. What the hell are you getting... By not helping human beings. You know, it, it's crazy. Well, just say if you want to just bring up like recent things that, that are always in the news. I mean, how many people are, I mean, you've got the TV camera crews mm -hmm. of this station, that station, they're there, but they have all, the, all these surveys, they're all holding up the cell phone to watch. But if you, you go to uh, uh, any type of athletic event or concert, how many people are holding <laughs> up the cell phone? That? I mean, I, go to a UFC event, yeah. how many folks oh, are yeah. holding up? The cell phone. Did you see Don just get his ass whooped by the headphones there? He was like getting his ass whooped. <laughs> so I want to take a break out of, I know that we're not doing anything scripted, but I want to ask you two questions. You two. No. Oh, no, no, no. I'm allowed to. This is America, no, Jack. You ain't got to answer. But these are two questions I have to ask. I'm going to ask each one of you one at a time, okay? Navy SEAL. Yeah, you make your little jokes. You're how old? Tell me how old you are. Uh, 29. 29 plus, plus a couple. Okay. <laughs> You and I, right now, we go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Who's going to win? Go. Well, you are a partner. Damn. Okay. Now, <laughs> let me ask you. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to go? Who's going to win, you and I, toe-to-toe? Toe-to-toe. Wow. Just, just only one well, man's? I, I hate to say this, but it's going to be me. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, I'm not going to be playing fair, though, either. <laughs> well, I, I go. You're not. And like with Don right now, like I said, you just got to stay away. I got to stay away from the hands. Like, yeah. hopefully I can tire them out somehow. Um, I have another question I've but, always wanted to ask. But that's, but again, you, you brought some good points so earlier. There's a certain state of mind, and, and there's a lot of, I've worked with, again, coaching at both Arizona State and Michigan State, and I've mm -hmm. had a little training facility for since uh, 
just eons. Yeah. Work with lots of athletes. It's easy to trade a body. Mm-hmm. The hardest thing to train is yes, the sir. mind. Yes, and, sir. And this is, in my opinion, the greatest tool in the world because if you can train this, you can make someone invincible. I agree. And you know what's so unique is when I came here, I didn't realize. I mean, on TV, every, everything makes people look bigger, right? Mm-hmm. You're two big motherfuckers, right? I mean, we were talking about that. As soon as I walked in yesterday, I'm like, remember we were talking about it, eyeing each other up, looking at wrist size and... Don's hand's the size of like my entire head. You got your hand is ridiculous, and, and you and I was like, and I and I was thinking to myself, I wonder if because I think once you have that mindset, that mentality, do you still situational awareness always? I of course, of course, right? Like yeah, I mean I, even, even like last, last night when we would have some discussions, it's kind of like where I try to sit myself. So were you actually going? If I had to kick his motherfucker's ass, would I do this? this did, were you? Were you well, no, I could because I, I was. There was, <laughs> I was, I was, there was pre, preconceived ideas that I would have. Okay, we have a Navy SEAL coming out of it. I mean, you got somebody that, that would be highly skilled, yeah. highly trained. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like going, but you have to have a different mindset there too. Because, yeah. and, and a lot of people, there are a lot of people that they don't have a certain mindset. Are they able to take another person's life yeah. or not? Yeah. So it's, uh, there's, a, there's a different mindset. Question for you is, when did you... When did you want to go into the military? First off, what, what I That's guess a good what, question. What was your <clears throat> motivating factor, or what aimed you to go into military? That's that's a great question. So I was eighteen, going on nineteen, and just going down the wrong path. Just you name it: drinking, drugs, getting in fights, obviously regular fights. <laughs> um, just doing a lot of stupid shit. Um, you know, bad childhood. You know, boohoo, poor me. Um, you know, I tell everybody I'm an Irish Jerry Springer show and just my whole life. I was always told I wasn't bigger, wasn't bigger. I wasn't big, big enough, fast enough, strong enough, smart enough. And, um, you know, if I didn't join the military, I was doing roofing. We were talking about that yesterday. I was uh, doing roofing and I thought you said roofies. No, (laughs) (laughs) I just wasn't happy. And I'll never forget it. There's a guy that worked with me that was 29 years old at the time. I thought he was like 40. He looked older than you. And, and no, I don't mean that as a dig, but he was, wow. you know, shit. Wow. I, no shit. I, I think that was a pretty good dig. There we go. I was Get like, in the balls. Huh? Yeah. You, you, start, to him? you started, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> but we're up on the roof and he's a great guy. And, you know, he, you know, he was smoke. He was a pothead, but he was a great guy, you know, and he lived paycheck to paycheck and this and that. And I remember he told me, he's like, you know what, man, this is not for you. There's something more, and I don't know what it is. And I just, it kind of really resonated with me. I was like, this, this is not m- what I want my life to be. Um, and I started looking around, and I was, you know, on the way of going to jail, doing a lot of stupid shit. Um, and I looked in the military. I, I went to the Air Force. Originally, I went to the Air Force, and literally, I took my ASVABs. Wow, don't even ask. Um, what is the ASVAB? ASVAB is an ap- uh, like a, a, a test to see what, you, what your placement would be. I didn't place very high. I wasn't good at taking tests. Well, you know, if mechanical, if a, you know, if a train's going 80 miles an hour east and another one's going 90 miles an hour west, one of the, I don't know. I've never been on a fucking train. So give me another question, you know? And there was questions about three holes in a boat. I don't know. I'd, I'd just try to pick, fix all the fucking holes. Um, but I, I went around to the recruitment center and I went into the Navy and I saw this pamphlet for Navy SEALs, right? And these guys would look like monsters. And it was like, the hardest, you know, the hardest training in the world. And I was always a super aggressive, super competitive kid, right? But I was always competitive with myself. I mean, you, I'm always trying to beat me. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, you, you, yeah. you basically set goals for yourself. Yes. So okay. you're in competition and, with yourself. Yeah, I, I get right? It. And then whoever gets in your way, you're not competing against them. You're just trying to better yourself. And if you happen right. to knock somebody out, or it, it happens. Well, like Dan Gable, you know, you, you're... Come out of the gym better than when you were Exactly, there. exactly, my steel church. And I just went in there, and I, I looked at the recruiter, and I said, I swear to God, I said, this is what I want to do. And he looked at me, and he goes, you'll never make it. Wow. And I was like, wow, you're a shitty salesman, bro. Yeah. And, <laughs> but instead of, you know, instead of giving up on myself like everyone, I mean, my mother, everybody told me, you're never going to make that. We don't, we've just heard stories. I just used the, you know, my mindset, the conquer, it's, and I say this to myself. I'm not saying this to you too, obviously, but it's like, fuck it. You can do this, Ray. And then it's, fuck you. I say that to myself, not to you. Right, yeah. right. That, you know, if somebody else did it, I can do it, right? That's my mindset, my mantra in life. If he can do it, why can't I? 
like with everything. And then Buds, that was, I went to Buds. And I didn't just go to Buds right away. Some of these guys just, you know, they go in and they're PT specimens and they're really fucking smart. Not me. I had to take the ASVAB test three times. It took me, it took me three times. You have to wait six months each time to take this. A year and a half. Yeah, a year and a half. And the second time I, I took it, God is my way. I missed it by one point. Everybody wow. said, that's your calling. You're done. Wow. And, you know, that's where I kind of had that mind shift that we talked about. Because I used to try to prove everybody wrong. Mm -hmm. But then, like, something switched. The switch came on it. And it said, like, I looked in the mirror and I do these self-reflection drills. And I'm like, no. Stop worrying about them and start proving to yourself that you're right. So then what I did was, is I asked for external help. Right? I, I had plateaued out. I was reading the books. I wasn't drinking. I wasn't chasing ass. But I just wasn't, you know, my brain wasn't doing what it needed to do. So I reached out to a gentleman by the name of Wine One Cochran, who's still a hero to me in this day. And I said, I need help. I mean, was he a SEAL at the time? No, was, he was just oh. a regular Navy guy okay. who was wicked smart, who could help me get like, um, he was like a yeoman. So he was like an administrative person. And he set me up with all these night courses, right? I'd work all day and then go to school all night. And true story about this, and this is one of the most, like, most impactful moments of my life. The final third time, he's like, listen, you're going to take this three times, and, you know, it's like three strikes, brother. And I'm like, okay. So I took it. I'm an, I'm an E1, so I'm nobody, right? I'm, like, not even hair on balls. I'm, like, below that. And I'm standing in front of him, and he's at his desk, and he was reading something. And he didn't even look at me, you know, and I wasn't standing attention, but he's like, how do you think you did? Like, I don't know. Dead silence. He's just, you know, he's playing it up. And he goes, he just looks up at me. He goes, congratulations, you made it. And the first thing I said was, what was my score? <laughs> and this is what he said. Don't worry about what your score is. Worry about what you're going to do now. And it really, I, mean, I got goosebumps right now. And to this day, he still won't tell me what that score was. But he did tell me, listen, <laughs> you, didn't bl you, didn't, you didn't crush it. So, <laughs> but my point is, <laughs> and, that's, yeah. and that's what I tell people. And I use that same, I don't judge a man on what he has done. I'm going to judge a man on what he's doing or what he can do, right? right. We had this, and, and that's what he said. He goes, the time is yours now. And when I went through Buds, man, I mean, it was do or die for me. You know, it's 138 of us started, 16 original made it. I started with my class and I finished with my class. We had 51 graduate, but these are like legitimate guys that break bones or, you know, hype out or something. Nope. I want, I want the fucking, you know, straight, the quickest way to success is a straight line. Six months, get me in and get me out. And I, I, what I think was where I'm going to kind of circle this all back around was the horrible childhood, the fa what happened to my father, the not, um, not having the real supportive mom, not having people really believe in me mm -hmm. is where I think I developed my own mindset that you got to, some journeys you just got to do by yourself, right? I mean, and I did it. And now my goal is, is instead of having young men and women go through this alone, you know, I told you today, I did th th almost 1,400 push-ups. I want to do it with you. Because there's only two types of leaders in the world. You both know this. Do as I say, not as I do. Or do as I say, do as I'm fucking doing, right? Like, perfect example. You know, if you tell me how to hit somebody, teach me how to hit somebody. And then hit me and show me how it works. Don't hit me hard, but, but that's what leaders do, right? They lead. And, just be, and what I always tell people is, is just because someone screwed you over or fucked you over or didn't do you right, that does not give you the right... To continue that tradition, that's a totally. shitty tradition, uh, yeah. right? Yeah, I totally I mean, agree. You, you do a lot of great things. Okay, you know, that's what a lot of people won't, won't understand that. But I mean, it's uh, you have, you've you you you've been able to set the stage for yourself to where now you can use your your life and and what you're doing just to make a positive influence. Yeah. But there's a lot of people that they're just lost. Yep. And, and they're they're looking for some type of leadership. Uh, some people. Yep. Uh, are attracted to different types of people, be, uh, uh, ways that they respond to. But anymore, I think you need that shock and awe. I, I agree, sir. And I, I and tell more. people, people yeah. all the time are like, I'm, you know, your father was murdered and this and that. I'm like, and they're like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. And I mean, it's, I know when I say this, sometimes I get some, la um, some lashbacks from it. But it's like, if that didn't happen to me, I don't think, and again, I don't, I'm not saying I'm like something awesome. I wouldn't be the man that I am today, right? Like, Correct. you know, I was 
beaten really bad as a child. I don't beat my kids, right? I don't need to. Um, I was mentally abused. I was physically abused. I was emotionally abused. I don't do that to my kids. I don't do that to my wife. I just, I decided enough is enough. Just, and it's the thing. What most people do in life is, you know, like a dog, right? You beat a dog enough, eventually that dog is going to lash back. Well, what I decided to do is I was going to go away and heal and come back and be the best fucking dog I could be and help other dogs so they, they don't have to experience that type of trauma. Because men, I'm just talking men now, or, or, and, and humans have two things. They have an inner bitch and they have what's called toxic cognitions. Inner bitch is fear, doubts, and frustrations. That's it. Okay. If you're a father, I have fear. Doubts, whenever I try, every morning that I get up, I have doubts like, holy shit, but here we go. And frustrations, I'm married. I have a daughter. Um, I worry about money. I worry about, you know, who's in office. I worry about all the shit. Of course I have frustrations. But I continue to be the best version I can. But then I also have toxic cognitions, which are demons, right? Some, like PTSD. You do a lot of bad shit, eventually it's going to catch up with you. If you've been treated like a dog, you know, if you've been mentally, emotionally, socially, spiritually, socially, or, and sexually abused, you can't outrun that demon. You can't. But what you can do is turn around and face it, name, claim, and tame that bitch and say, okay, I'm not alone, right? Just because I was abused doesn't mean I have to abuse someone else. And, you know, and that's a lot of these groups that I do is it's just an accountability. I just think men need to be held more accountable and responsible for their own actions and realize that if they have had a, a horrible childhood or things have happened to them, hopefully it's not their fault. And number two, I tell people, you and you alone have the power to change and be who you want to be. And if you don't, right, 99% of the world's problems can be solved by looking in the mirror. And if you don't like what the fuck you see, then change it. Yeah. That's... that's, that's it's an easy thing to say. But it's a hard thing to do. Yes, yes, sir. A lot of people, I mean, because of whatever their addiction is or whatever their... Bad habit is it, it's a very difficult thing to do. It's uh, yeah, again, I'm, I'm I'm really big about setting goals. I'm I'm really big about having accountability. So, mm. a lot of people can't do it for themselves, mm. but maybe you have to get a buddy. Maybe you have to get yeah. somebody that will help hold you accountable to those things. Uh, you know, like what you were saying before, to achieve success or to to break that barrier. I mean, it was uh, uh, part of our conversation of yesterday. I had seven other brothers and sisters. Yeah. Okay. So to to take the thought of asking my parents for money to go to college never entered my mind whatsoever because, you know, my parents got, they've got eight kids. They're trying to keep them clothed. They're trying to keep them going to school. Things of that nature. So I'm thinking, you know, it's, uh, my first thought was that uh, I had a couple of my, my friends on, on the wrestling team. They had older siblings that basically upon high school graduation, they graduate, they went into the military. Mm -hmm. And then came out and went to college on the GI Bill. Yes. So that was actually option number one. I'm thinking, that's exactly what I'm going to do. But by my sophomore year, I had the first of the co uh, college coaches that, that are looking at me as, there might be some scholarship money. I'm thinking, wow, we have option number two. Options. So I always talk about options, trying mm -hmm. to create options. And so once I got this option number two, it's like going, well, I've got a couple more years to try to explore and exploit these options. Yeah. And that's what I, I spent more time of, you know, going to more camps, training a little bit more, setting my goals for myself. And uh, it worked out towards like upon uh, now high school graduation. Now I've got this opportunity to go to college. Yeah. And, and on an athlete scholarship. Bingo. There it's good go. to have options. It, it is. is. It's when you don't have options that people feel like I have no way out. Yeah. Keep options. an eye, keep an eye on Don. You know, what's funny as I sit here, you guys know I had a podcast with Jason Redman and Jason Redman is well articulated and he's, you know, he's always looks the part and he's just, you know, very well to do. Wait, wait, wait what, 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 why are you looking at me when you, when oh, you I'm giving you, I'm giving you things. And then, and then there's and then me, the there's Ray Cash Care, <laughs> there's, you know, just got up, fuck the hair, I'm here. Um, I've got cigar shit all over me and, and I love it because you guys are literally Jason and I salt and pepper is what we call ourselves. Uh, well, yeah, we, the martial arts sets yin and yang, yin yes. and yang. Yeah. <laughs> and I love it. I, I, I love the, uh, well, that's where you'll, you'll, we'll be, I don't think we really mean to be entertaining at times, but, uh, there'll be, uh, we'll make people ponder some points. Yeah. We might make people get a little bit pissed off at, at times because just like you said before, 
there's a lot of people that need to be woken back up. Yeah. So I did have one other question I wanted to ask you guys because remember I, I can ask too I can do any because this is we can well, unedit yeah, it. This is two way street on this. You bet. So okay, and I know we kind of talked, you know, but I'm trying to imagine what it would be like because you and I, I don't I don't say ages, but you have daughters. We're gonna leave it at that. I don't get into your personal lives. I'm just trying to imagine <laughs> what the fuck it would be like. <laughs> seriously, because I like people are scared of me. Right. I mean, seriously. And I was like, I wonder what it would be like knocking on the door, asking to take one of the, their girls to prom or holy shit, ask for their hand in marriage. I mean, I could just see I'll fucking kill you. I, I don't know, man. But I was just like, even my wife was like, God, you know, because like, I mean, I'm wide, but I'm short. But you guys are like wide and big and, you know, you got titles and this and that. But have you ever just like and I know you're very. Like you can just probably give a stern face. I, I, I'm gonna let Don. Yeah, let start Don. Off by this Have you ever scared we'll... the shit out of a kid? I mean, because I'm worried about if I'm gonna get out of here alive if I keep fucking with you. <laughs> that's that's what I'm worried about. I don't know. My uh, oldest daughter, her boyfriend, when he came over, he always had a gun on his hip. And then my youngest daughter, her boyfriend, just sat in the car, honked the horn, never came in. So I can't blame him. But I could see you like taking a gun from somebody and just, I'll whoop your ass. That gun ain't going to help you. Because right. I mean, like, that's amazing. I just, wow. Yeah. I'll just say that uh, when they, they come a calling, that uh, I, I would definitely keep very stern looks and go say, uh, what time are we coming back home, young man? Yeah, because you're both intimidating in different ways. Like, you are just insane. And I mean that with, <laughs> no, you are. You just, I mean, right? But you more of the tactician you just watch and i'm like what is he thinking is he eyeing me up and i always see you're always looking i'm like okay and i do i'm wondering how i'm like i've looked at my exits to get the hell out of here if things go bad like i can outrun you i no, don't know if i can outrun we're, we're, you yet we're enjoying we're enjoying your company ray we're he's enjoying like your company cat. he's like a cat <laughs> laying there just <laughs> a pawn pawn the, mar the rat <laughs> i love it yeah, that I was all it. my questions i just had to know what it would be like because it would be pretty uh i could see me just like oh my god <laughs> well, I, I do have a son-in-law, and he actually was very nervous because when uh, when it came time to propose a date of that nature, I mean, it was, uh, uh, well, I'll say that I, I had the, the, first off, I had the, the birds and the bees talk with each of my kids. And they were rather comical between the boys and the girls of how I administered it. But uh, it was uh, uh, when it came to... Uh, the time that they were thinking about marriage, mm -hmm. uh, I basically said, okay, it's time to take you back out behind the woodshed once again, because you brought up a good point. There's, there's a big difference between when people get married, what they thought, <coughs> what they had their preconceived mm -hmm. thoughts were, and what, what turns out reality are two different things. So I was really big about uh, talking to my sons and, and daughters when they were thinking about getting married. And, uh, and then after they decided they still wanted to, Forge ahead. I go. Now I want you to bring your significant other, and I want to talk. And I want to talk to them. And I actually have a list of all the questions that they. I'm kind of kind of put them through. I actually do have a, a list. And now, now, now my between my son and my daughter, they both actually got nervous. I go. It'll be held at a public place. Trust me, it'll be held at a public place. Go. I I won't I won't kill them. Mm -hmm. You know. But I go because if I kill them, I have to kill then all the witnesses yeah, i'm getting older now i might get only halfway through all these people here that you'll know, get tired and you know i'll get caught so i go it'll, it'll be safe but now, but it's good it was it was good to me because it makes them think and ponder because it's there are i'll say there are marriage manuals and they did that nature but i i don't think they're quite blunt enough or relevant enough to what they really should be so are you the boss of your household uh, no, 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 neither mind. No, 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 just checking. No, no, just, it, it, it doesn't matter at what level. Okay, just checking. Okay. How well, about but, you? Were you? I got my bulldog. She she runs the house. Everything. That's right. The yeah. world is. That's yeah, right. I'm a smart man. I, when it comes to that aspect, again, thinking and calculating. That's right. You might be the king of the jungle, but the woman is the jungle. So yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, just making sure. Even at that level, it, it, it's it goes all the way up the food chain. Roger that. Yeah. Okay, but but be, be from the military aspect though. Okay, jump back out your career a little bit. How long were you actually just in the military before you wanted to then become the SEAL, though? I mean, so, how far? So I joined the military in... You said 18? 1992. And then I went through BUDS the end of... 
Yeah, I went in buds in 1995. So I did three years in the regular military. Okay. Um, I worked out at uh, Keyport, Washington. I, I did what was called neutral duty. I had no clue what the hell it was. Like in the military and in, in the Navy, you have sea duty and shore duty. And like everybody was getting sea duty, sea duty, sea duty. And then like a couple of the real weirdos got some shore duty. And then I joined with a guy named Mike Holmes. And they were like, Holmes, care, neutral duty. And even like the, the first class, we were like, I was like, what the hell is that? <laughs> so what we did is we went to Seattle and we go out on a boat during the day and work. We recovered torpedoes and we would come back in. It was the greatest job in the world because the regular Navy, the regular military, ladies and gentlemen, is so easy. Like Forrest Gump said it the best. Just do whatever you tell me. Like if they, and, and, and I used, that's where I came up with my whole, my concept. If you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. And if you're late, you should be fired. The regular military, all I had to do was show up early. I always showed up 15 to 30 minutes early. My uniform always looked immaculate. And I always just said, yes, sir. Yes, petty officer to people. And I like rised above the rest by just doing Those what, was ex- what, but what was expected because people show up and they want everything. And like, I remember when I was, you know, I didn't tell a lot of people I wanted to be a Navy SEAL, but they're like, oh, we're going to go out and party. And we're going to go out and drink. And I was like, nope, I'm a fucking train. You know what I mean? You guys train your way and I train mine. And, it, and it, what I'll tell anybody that's aspiring to be a SEAL or aspiring to do what you guys do, it's not easy. It's going to hurt, you know, and, and that's why I'm wearing a shirt. You got to put the fuck out. It's not going to be easy, you know. I mean, you didn't get, you guys didn't get where yeah, you were yeah. from just showing up and going, okay, you know. You wrestled for years and you've probably been beating people up since you were six. I don't know. And that's what happens. But you've been, you know, it's consistency. And yeah, man, and. Because it drives me nuts when people are like, yeah, I want to be a Navy SEAL, but. <laughs> I mean, but. You know? What, so, what are you doing to prepare? Prepare. Yeah, prepare. What do you mean? I, I had a guy once that says, um, do you have to be a good swimmer to be a Navy SEAL? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> kind of, you know, but were you a good a swimmer? No, I was not. Well, how'd you become a good swimmer? I just, Jumped just did it. Water. I just did it. Right? It's take action. Right? Decision making. People drive me crazy. They ask, it's ask, make, take. In the SEAL teams, we say, analyze, assess, execute, but I don't mean execute in a bad way. Execute whatever you're going to do. Right. So let's keep it civilian. Ask, what is the problem? What do I want to do? Make, make a decision. And then this, but this is what people don't do. Take action. In a fight, if you guys, if you want to do a single leg takedown, we were talking about that, you're going to ask, make, and you're going to take it, right? Yep. You're going to punch me in the face real fast. But if you sit there and pause, you could probably get hit back somebody might counter you. So it's the same thing in life. Don't get countered. Be offensive when it comes, right? Be on the offensive when it comes to taking action because most people, they hesitate. Hesitation causes devastation. And that's what I think the problem is with society. They're so worried about what the hell people are going to... I don't care what people think about me, like in, 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 the, in, the, in the whole thing. I, I'm going to be the best version of myself and hopefully that projects or the reflection of that is something that, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here in front of you guys. Obviously, I'm doing something fucking right. I wouldn't be here if I was a piece of shit, would I? No. Yeah. Or unless you guys take people outside and kick their ass after it's over. <laughs> I don't know. But that's what it's about. And, you know, falling back on what does this generation, generation need to do? They just need to do more, believe in more, and, you know, be thankful for what you have. I've traveled the entire world. And I'll tell you this right now. This is what I tell everybody. This isn't a political statement. If you don't like America, get on a fucking plane, go to a couple of these places, Afghanistan, Iraq, <laughs> Yemen, um, Syria. Try those out for me. Go there for two weeks. If you come back alive, I promise you, you will have a new perspective on life. Shit, yeah. they just go down 80 miles down the border there, you know, yeah. go yeah. across the border, spend a couple of weeks in Mexico, you know, Honduras, Guatemala. It's crazy. Um, yeah, yeah, it's all, all part of what we talked about like, like last night. Of just you know, average, during my amateur wrestling career, going to all these uh, other uh, countries, mm-hmm. and uh, <clears throat> now, now you know, wonder why everyone wants to come to the United States. We really are the land of opportunity to do anything and everything, even if it's the most stupidest thing in the world, to let people march here and protest that. Whereas if they try to do that in their own countries, they would either be sent off to the gulag or they will be yeah. taken, taken out back and exterminated sure, yeah, and, but just have a clean running water or yeah. sewer you know? and i have no or problem with someone that comes from anywhere on the planet if they do it right right get a green card get a job oh, bust your ass your and work through, but yeah. coming here and saying hey 
Gimme, 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 gimme. Yeah. yeah. You know, you. if I I paid so much money in taxes this year, I don't know what I, I don't even know what the hell I'm doing. You know, where it's going. Because it goes to everything. I want it to go to help, you know, America. Stop I, like I tell them. And I, I so how, I mean that, that mm. Ray, that to interrupt you like this, but how do we get more of our politician and, and elected officials to take your course? Because I think they could uh, stand uh, uh, to be to be reminded Tem- that, uh, <laughs> what what country that they live in. Well, I don't and, think uh, they've broken a sweat. Democrats are scared to come to my course. Republicans have a few that will. I'm not, I'm not sitting here judging or getting political, yeah. but um, I don't think I don't think they could handle the the calluses or anything like that. Do you think? No, the, I don't. Yeah, no, I don't. I, I, I don't think people nowadays are just ready to do what we used to do in that. And again, who am I? Roll up your sleeves and don't be scared to get your hands dirty. You know, if you want to work, you want to learn how to do something then do it. I, I hate reading books. I want to build a deck. Let me go out there. Somebody teach me how to book and build a deck. I'm going to be there right with you. That's how I get shit done. And I think that's what we need. The world, I told you, just needs to get, <laughs> to get punched in the face. I mean... Well, I think that's a, a way of say punch your face is maybe that reality call. The reality yeah, call. That, yeah, that's that's the, the, the wake up call. The, you know, the, the smack to reality is what yes. I call it. The, the punch in the face is just because of the audience I'm with, you guys. But yeah, you know, um, I think more people need to be called out. I think more people need to be held accountable. Um, I think more people need to step up and, and be a great human being, right? Success is not the kind of car you drive. The kind of clothes you wear, success is how you, how you help others help themselves, right? Um, and and Bezos and, Coolian and, helped and, me with that. And they're not looking for. I don't want anything in return. They're yeah. not looking for that glamour yeah. in the process. So that that but that's again the world we 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 uh, live in with the, the land of the selfies. Exactly. Everyone wants to simply take a picture with them. Look, I'm here doing this. Yep. I'm here. I'm doing that. It to me is like going, are you that? pathetic are you that uh, sad in your life that that's the only way that you could get recognition Wait. from your from your friends your peers your family members that's kind of like going I, I agree with you with that but i took like 20 selfies with you guys earlier <laughs> yeah, and then those, blast them uh, so i feel a little yeah, a lot of people haven't accomplished anything though. no i agree you know, you've accomplished a lot dan's accomplished a lot you know everybody in here has accomplished yeah. a lot well yeah. we're also trying i mean we're, we're trying to make an entertaining product but we we we're looking to, to, to try to break a message to people in, in, in different ways. I mean, it's uh, it's kind of like, you know, to go around the blocks and, and to have uh, a Navy SEAL on our show. I mean, it's, it's, well, look at our backdrop. Yeah, I love it. I love it. America. America. That, I, got it, I got it right here. I got it right here just yeah. in case. I don't. So, so that's what we're all about. I mean, we, we showed just a couple of bling blings of, of, of days gone by, but these are what people, you know, be able to still look up videotapes. I mean, Don, I mean, Don is still in the, the number one most viewed combat uh, video there is. Well, his match with <laughs> Takiyama, I mean, God. just just craziness like that. But it's kind of like, but he's here that he could talk about those. But then talk about <clears throat> what is he doing now with his life? Yeah. I mean, it's not like he's just you know putting up his feet and that's it. He he still gets up and he still gets after it. You know, and you have to. And what I love about the back, the back scene here, your your backyard, because wow, you got an amazing place. Is there's these huge mountains out here, and I live by. I have a company called Conquer, right? Yeah. Seven points of performance to master you. And this is what I tell people: you have to have. It's called the attack the hill mindset. So, we this isn't we didn't go over this, but most people, right? You have a hill. They see a hill and they're they're jogging, and they see the hill, and the first thing they do is they go, ah, "Fuck, I've got to go up the hill." And what do they do? They walk up the hill and then they, they let gravity, right, which is I, symbolism of negative entities, people, places, or things, control what they're doing on their descent. But this is what I'll tell people. If you reverse engineer that, if you fill that glass up to here, most people are going to say it's half empty. It's not. It's half full. You need to attack the hill. And then once you put that mental, emotional, social, spiritual, and financial growth into that cup, people stop when it's full. No, motherfucker, get another cup. We'll dump it into there. So the symbolism out here I look at is I'm going to do, I'm going to try to run up that hill as fast as I can. But when I get up there, I'm going to take a breath, six, six, situational awareness, sound like Mel Tillis there with a the stutter, sorry. And then <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to control the descent down. Now, from an athletics standpoint, if you and I could run the same speed, if we're the same human being and you walk up the hill and you run down the hill and I walk up the hill and I I, I run, you know, I run up, you walk up. I walk down, you run down. If we do that 50 times, not only will I beat you, but you'll be more fucked up than me. You know why? Because what's going to happen when you start running and getting tired? Gravity is going to just make you go ass over tea kettle. Yep. 
So that's what I tell people. Don't, and the, the trick to life is you can't control everything. You can't, but you can control your actions. So like when I see the hill and the hill, the representation is family, fitness, finances, and faith. That's my hill. That's what I have to conquer, right? I'm going to run up the hill and be the best husband I can. When I get up there and I like, if I do something great for my wife, that's great. But now I got to go find another hill. There's another day, another battle. Mm -hmm. And that's what people need to do. They, and I said this in the show, the selection I did, people just want to get dropped off at the top of the hill and keep walking down the hill. That's not how you're going to be successful, right? Right. You're not. And, and that's what the world needs to do is they just need to start running up the hill. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to get tired, right? But you can condition your body, your mind, and your soul to do that. It just takes time. And my, my, my motto for life is time plus effort equals results. Now watch. Uh, I know you got your crayon over here, but I'm going to ask you a question. You ready? All right. All right. Piss poor time plus piss poor effort equals what? Uh, something failure. Something with piss poor. I, I, yeah, I there you go. It goes with it. P piss poor piss, everything. Piss poor piss effort. Poor, That's right. Poor, there you go. Piss poor. Right. But if you give, you give it your all. Maximum time, maximum effort. You're going to get, and your results may vary from yours. Right. Sure. You both are. But who cares? There's no such thing as you're, you're going to feel a whole lot better about right. yourself, but then also about a lot of things around you. I did an analogy before about uh, what, what you're using. A lot of people don't realize that Don basically has, you know, you've been a bit of a, a blacksmith in the past for yes, shoeing horses. Say, that Farrier, so what, what, what you're talking about there about heating that metal up. Beat that beating with, it down. With, yep. Beat that in the metal. Make it, you're forging it. Changing it and you're forging it. So it's the same same analogy. It's the same that. analogy that works. You just have to figure out what analogy works for your, because we were out there feeding your horse last night. I, yeah. I want to jump off one other center. Of my my uh, one son, David, he was involved in a wrestling program. They were known as the Vikings. Mm hmm and they always showed the Viking they were swinging this big old ballot. And I go, I go, I go, I go. <laughs> when he was looking for inspiration, I go, think of you as that Viking swinging that ballot and hitting that anvil. I said, the more that you hit that anvil, anvil that I go, that's like repetition. Yes. The more repetition, I go, you're forging, you're forging yourself. Mm -hmm. I go, and into life, you shall go. Do you want to be the anvil or do you want to be the hammer? Amen. And so it's kind of like going, that's where I'm, you know, trying to inspire my own children and stuff like that to be better than what they are. I love it. I love it. Sometimes you're the hammer. Sometimes you're the nail. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. You know? Yes, sir. In life, we're, we're not always going to be the hammer. No. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, partner, when, when was your dad murdered? So my dad, uh, when I was 11, um, I'm originally from Dundalk, Maryland, which is uh, not the greatest part of town yeah. um, in Maryland. But my father... Uh, Got in a lot of trouble, um, um, got in, lost his license, got in a bunch of motorcycle accidents, was in a motorcycle gang, and he, I guess, had an alteration, altercation with a guy in a bar. He was a brawler, and he beat the shit out of a guy, and he was walking home, and the guy actually ran him over with a car. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, um, and you know, it's funny, I was 11. Oh, it's not funny, but they never, from what I hear, they never found the guy. I think there was more to the story than that. And then from there, I was actually with my mother, because obviously... They were separated. They've been separated since I can remember. And I actually have an aunt who's a police officer in Baltimore County. She's like a legend and, and, as a police officer. And she came and told me. And I just remember being so fucking angry, you know, like, why would, why would somebody take my dad? And, you know, he wasn't the best man in the world, but he was my dad. So, you know, and, you know, I mean, it sucks, but, you know, there was a lot of good things that he did and a lot of bad things he did, but I still loved him. And I think it's what helped me, you know, just, um, I think developed the mindset that I needed that, you know, no matter how bad shit is, shit could always be worse, right? I mean, I lost my dad. There's people that have lost both their parents in an accident or, you know, God forbid, people that get cancer, or kids. I mean, it's horrible. So I, I just, when that happened, I just have always tried to find the positive in something, right? You know, people are always, you know, the guys that like, I won a million dollars in a lottery. Yeah, but they're going to take $600,000. Who gives a shit? You're still making $400,000. Shut up. Find the good in things. Right. You know, and that's because that's what people do in life. You know, you have the seesaw of of negativity, right? So you have a seesaw. I put I put Don on one side, no one on the other side, and it's going to fall, right? You're, you're not small; it's going to fall. I need from your your negativity. I need seven people to counterbalance that out. So all I've done in my life 
is I trim the fat. I get rid of people, people, places, and things. I don't even speak to my mother anymore. I haven't spoke to my mother in three or four years because a lot of the shit that she was doing carried over to my daughter. One day we went up to go visit my daughter, or excuse me, visit my mother. We stopped. I went up to go see a New York show and we were driving home and my mother lives right off the road where we're driving, right down 13, we're going right down the coast. She's in Delaware. And I, you know, I'm not embarrassed about this and you know, if she gets pissed off, so what? But we went there right around Christmas. We didn't tell her. Not one fucking picture of us in the house. She said she took them all down because of Christmas, but all my sister had all her pictures up there and everything. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Well, my wife <laughs> didn't find it as acceptable as I did. So she made a comment. My wife's from Brooklyn. She made a comment. And she was pissed. And my mom was, oh, oh, came up with this. Well, that's not what hit home. We got in the car. My daughter's young, in the car seat still. And she said to me, Daddy, why doesn't Mimi love me? Well, right there. Uh, and that's when I was like, I cannot allow, because my mom did this to me, and I, okay, I get it, right? And I can accept that, but I cannot accept my daughter feeling that she's not wanted or loved. I mean, not one picture of her granddaughter, but my sister had all her kids there. It was, it was weird. And I think a lot of that issue is, and we, we have a lot of unresolved issues, is I look just like my dad. Her and my dad had issues. They separated. He was a womanizer. He was this, he was this. That's not me. You know, just because I look like somebody doesn't mean I'm them. So um, I tried calling my mom and talking to her about it. And she was very, um, she wasn't compliant with anything I was saying. She didn't want to hear it. And I had to make the decision as, you know, the man of the house, right? The, you know. You're looking out for the best of your family. I was looking out for the best of them. Even though it hurt, you know, I had to rip that Band-Aid off. And, you know, my daughter now, it's been three or four years. She's accepted it. Um, and we've moved on. And I will not allow my daughter to think that's okay. I can't, I can't pass that tradition on that. It's okay to be walked on or put down, you know, f physically, mentally, emotionally. Um, and I, because that's the thing, right? Each one of us in life leaves a legacy. You guys have legacies. You know, and I tell people. Do me a favor, write a eulogy. You die right now. Write a eulogy out, and then as soon as you write that eulogy out, read it, and then you're going to die. Do you like what that eulogy says? Because I don't like what my eulogy says right now. Right. So what I'm trying to do and what I tell people to do is do that drill and every day rewrite that eulogy. Every freaking day rewrite. Like, I want it to be like, you know, great father, great husband, great friend, Hellcat and Sack, I don't know, with the wife. I don't know, whatever, right? To kind of keep it fun, but... Just, just, I actually want to say great fucking human being, if I could. If I had to have it say one little thing, and I do that. Like, I, I did my push-ups today. When there's people working and putting out, I'll tell a man, like, hey, brother, I love you. I thank you for what you're doing. I, I don't love the guy. I love what he stands for. Right, exactly. And I tell guys, it's okay for a warrior to tell a warrior he loves him. Not like we're going to be making out. Right. You know, shave that mustache if we're doing that. <laughs> yes, maybe, maybe. But <laughs> give people... Gratitude. Tell people that they're special. Make people feel like they're special. And don't be ashamed to tell people, somebody, like, seriously, people, I don't even, I love you. I love you, buddy. I love what you're doing. Yeah. Right? I mean, I don't, I'm not in love with you. That's my wife and I love my daughter, but I literally had 62 people in there today, guys, gals, and I tell them, I love you. And they're just like, respect wow, yeah, it's a, res respect. it's a show of respect, right? Same thing. When you shake a man's hand, even Don, fucking barely stands up every time right i never i don't shake a man's hand sitting down i stand up and look him in the eye right yeah. and i think that's just what people need to do they just need to start and i'm not sitting here like this is a woodstock event but no but these these are all little steps little things that build right they just they, they build off of each other yes. it helps build that character you know just again that that, that shaking of the hand that looking at yep. a person in, in the face um just those little uh, attributes that, I love that, it. that you do. I, shit, we have a lady named Lauren. I'll give it to her. She's she's lost 50 pounds working out with me in six That's months. Great. And I told her, you are sexy as fuck. And my wife is like, yes, you are, girl. It's not like I'm, I'm right, not hitting right, on the girl. Yeah, no. I'm, giving, I'm, I'm showing her that, hey, you lost 50 pounds. I tell her, throw on something sexy, girl. Yeah. Go out there and show Celebrate the world it. what you're doing. Yeah. Celebrated that aspect. But don't stop. Exactly. Right? Don't stop. I'm not telling you to lose 200 pounds and be, a, be a, you know, super, super skinny. I'm just telling you that once you hit that target right. weight, but, keep. But that one aspect of losing weight alone, look at the confidence that puts, but it, not just about their weight, but how it's going to affect them in so many other ways in social environments. Because we, 
we are, we live in a very shallow oh, we industry. Do. I mean, it's, we, all the commercials are all about you have to do your makeup like this, your hair like that. You need to wear these Amen. clothes. You have to look a certain way. You have to act a certain way. So, you know, it's... Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. I think the commercials have changed over the last 40 years. I mean, when we were young, they used to have beautiful people, just beautiful people on TV. And now they got average-looking people or below-average-looking people. And I'm like... Man, that's that's, that's not, the new standard. Yeah, though. I Being, don't want that. I don't want to buy that product. I want the product that's going to make me look beautiful. You know? Well, society. I, I thought maybe Dad was watching the movie Dodgeball. <laughs> <laughs> he was thinking, we're going to the gym. Average Joe's here yeah. or something like that. Well, so, I want I want to be beautiful. Man. <laughs> well, society has changed. So, like my wife, five foot three, hundred and twelve pounds. She's built like a brick shit house. If she wears something sexy. There are women that'll cat car and say, oh, look at you, blah, blah, blah. Right. But then you'll see a 300-pound woman that wears barely anything, has no business wearing it, right? And I'll, I'll say it right, right to their yeah. face. Yeah. <laughs> and no one will say a word to it, and it's okay. It's acceptable because look, you go, girl. Why? Why can why can 300-pound go, girl, go, but 114-pound girl can't go? Yeah, look My wife works out twice a day. So what's, I mean... Right. You know, so I, I actually think that, you know, during the summertime, when, when beaches are open, stuff like that, that they should have beers... As people are walking from the parking lot to the beach, or to, to, to rethink that decision because uh, <laughs> it's it's not they've got uh, they've got three to four hundred pounds packaged oh, in on. this. We've, uh, we've this seen you sport the speed over there. So never Talk go. about PTSD. I've had some PTSD, beach PTSD. Yeah, there's some crazy shit out there. But here's my thing: is like I tell people, hey, do I was, you? I was young, Dad. I was young yeah. at the time. Confused. I tell people though, <laughs> if you if you want to be three hundred pounds and you want to wear shit that's totally inappropriate, that's your right. <laughs> but don't dig on a person who works out hard and wants to do the same thing. That's what I don't get. Yeah. That that double standard. That's what I can't stand. That's what pisses me off. Right? You know, like you. Oh, wow, you're an awesome Navy SEAL, but you're short. You see, you always got to throw a dig in there. (laughs) I'm actually sitting on the phone book right now so I can see you, so it feels good. (laughs) I didn't know you could hear me from that level. Oh, my (laughs) fuck you. That's twice. That's twice. Uh, But, yeah, my dad dad passing away, the the, the circle back around. Um, You know, obviously, there's a lot of traumatic with that, uh, a lot of unknown, a lot of uncertainty, and that's where, uh, like, where I come up with... um, I call it that, I do a self-reflection drill. I do it like every three months. I make people, I've, I'm a coach and I coach people and I make them look in the mirror because when I realized we were talking about I wanted to be a Navy SEAL and this and that, um, even though my dad was a good man, he did a lot of bad things. And that's just men talking to men. He just did a lot of shit I wasn't proud of, right? Mm. Um, but, you know, I, I'll never forget it because I can't, I'm like you, I can't remember what I had for fucking lunch two weeks ago. I can't. Mm. But I can remember being 18 years old coming home from a bar, intoxicated, God knows what I was taking on top of that, looking in the mirror like it was yesterday. I can remember what I was wearing. I looked in the mirror and I didn't see me. I saw him. And that's when I came up with that, holy shit, I have got to start changing my life. Otherwise, I'm going to be in motorcycle accidents and go to jail and do this and that. And that's what I tell people. You have to look in the mirror. And if you don't like what you see, I mean, and I'm not just saying look. I mean, you have to really stare. Like people hear and listen. Don't hear what I say. Listen to me. What, look at me when I'm talking, right? Absorb it. Yeah, and that, when I looked in that mirror, man, I didn't like what I saw. Yeah, so many people like to blame other oh. circumstances, so they, 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 but they're not willing to take that accountability. Exactly. There's so, no accountability. So to me, it's like I'm, I'm really big about what well, actually that I'm trying to think of. There's a classic uh, poem called The Band in the Mirror, mm-hmm. but it's all about what we just talked. I, I couldn't even begin to recite it, but, but, it's, but it's all about self-reflection mm-hmm. that don't look at anybody else to solve your problems you've got to solve your own problems yeah i agree and focus on you i always say focus on you focus on the few i have a very small group i focus on me first i'm not going to sit here and work on your shit unless i have my shit squared away you've got a lot of uh, you've got a lot of neat little rhymes that you've got uh, put together there i'm not your, super your, smart it's what helps me remember you it. Your rapper baby <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i do you know um just everything, like, you know, and that's the thing. I don't want your opinion. I want your advice. Like, wrestling, great. But, like, I'll have a guy like that's, uh, I'll give you an example. I have a guy that's going to a divorce. I can't, give you an, uh, I can't give you any advice on that. I have never been divorced. I can give you my opinion, but opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got one, and it really don't, just stinks. Yeah. So, unless I know what I'm talking about, unless I'm a subject matter expert on something, 
I'm going to keep my mouth shut. Like people are like, hey, what are your thoughts on? That's not my area, area of expertise. And people are like, well, I'm like, I'm not going to give you my opinion because my opinion doesn't mean anything. What am I basing my opinion off of? External sources? Nope. If I had been through a divorce, then I can give you a, a, a advice on being divorced. But if not then, I'm like, I literally would say, perfect example. Like if your dad hasn't been murdered, shut the fuck up. I don't want to hear what you got to say about your dad being, I don't, you know, unless you've lost someone. Hey man, I'm here for you. And I'll ask somebody, have you ever lost anybody? No. But I know what you're going through. How the fuck do you know what I'm going through? <laughs> right, right? Seriously. I, I, you don't. So I just, I, I think the world needs to stay in their lane a little bit more about things that they do and they don't know. Like, especially if I'm asking, so I'm asking, usually when I ask somebody, I know if I'm asking you something. I know you're the person to ask. I'm not just going to go around and say, Hey, and ask you something that's oh, like a Navy. Wall. I'm not going to ask you a Navy SEAL question. I'm yeah, going to ask okay. you a wrestling question or something like that. I'll ask you what you do. Same thing. <laughs> You know, what, what you do, whatever. Do I don't you know what the hell you do. <laughs> hey, how the hell do you punch something really fucking hard? There you go. But, and I think if the world just focused on the you and then started focusing, you know, I branch out into the few because, you know, kids, they're sponges. You know, people tell me my kids are this and this and this and this. Well, do you take time to do things with them? Are you doing this with them? Well, what are you, a fucking parent? Yeah, I am a parent. I'm also a parent who adopted a son. So, and I have my own daughter. So I can, I can, I can tackle both of those, brother. You know, that's what I tell people. And they're like, oh. So don't come at me with, you know, what are you, the parent of the year? No, I'm not the parent of the year. I'm, I, I need a lot of fucking work on that. But, but, there's the crescendo. I've learned a lot of lessons. All I want to do is pass on the shit that I've learned. That's all I do. And it's working. You know, it's working. And I get to come on these great podcasts, hang out with fucking icons that I fucking looked up to. And I actually thought you were older than him, but. Uh, you look up to everybody. <laughs> there it was. <laughs> I feel like I should be wearing a referee shirt here. <laughs> we have a sparring contest here is what we have going on. All right, Don, you and your prime and me and my prime. Who's winning? <laughs> <laughs> you, have, you have a prime? Yeah, I, no, I haven't hit it yet. God damn, you didn't, you didn't even pause on that laugh. <laughs> Can we take a break? Get something to eat. So where are we at here now? If we're talking about, uh, well, we've actually been talking about competition. Yeah. We're talking about combat. We're talking about uh, uh, America. We're talking about uh, foreigners. Uh, Spirit mindset, warrior mindset. Sounds like, we're, we're sound like marriage. Doing some, <laughs> doing some calculus Com- equations. and combat. I love it. <laughs> well, I, I know it, we had to have Don get that crayon and stuff, like you, as you said a little bit earlier. <laughs> That's it, to, to some, of that ma- some of that math Woo. right there. Started drawing pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Making pretty pictures for me. Well, let's touch, ba- touch base again on, on the combat. Uh, yeah. The mindset, because let's face it, combat's not for ed- everyone. No, no, there's, it's there's, not. There's, there's, there are those that can, and then there are those that, no, they can't be in, involved mm-hmm. in but, I'm, but you being involved, like, in the, uh, the, the SEALs, mm-hmm. Um, I mean, being in a seal, have you have you seen some people that have got actually gotten into seal category, mm-hmm. but then but you know that they're not combat worthy. Well, I mean, I don't know if they'd say combat worthy. There are some seals that just joined during um, events in life and segments in life where there wasn't an engagement going on and they didn't get their time in. Um, I didn't do. I really did nothing in the seal teams until I got out. And moved on to the agency when the war kicked off. Um, you know, there's guys that have been in the right the right time. You know, Rob O'Neill, shit. I mean, he, you know, he's been there. He's fucking one of the luckiest guys in the world. Um, you know, he's killed one of the most famous people in the world. And, you know, he's part of the Captain Phillips thing, which I did for real on TV. <laughs> that was my, my only fucking shot. But, yeah, there's a lot of guys that actually get in the teams and they get out. Because I don't know if they so much join to get into a battle, but you know, it's like, you know, you train, 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 you fucking want to apply it to something, you know? So for me, there wasn't a whole lot going on. I got out, um, shit. And, uh, what was it? March of Oh four. Yeah. But just to interrupt real quick though, you, you, you first looked at actually just to become, you you were part of of the Navy, but now to become that Navy seal, I wanted to be the best. Yeah. That that was, that was your challenge first to yourself. And, and and I knew what I was signing up for, right? You're two things are going to happen. Eventually you're either going to have to take, or you're going to be taken right life. You, you know, and that's the thing as in sometimes you may, I I still think that applies. even to a great, right. right? You know, it's, it's me or you. And, and it's not just me and you when you're on, when you're with your platoon, it's you and your brothers, right? My job in the SEAL teams and when I moved on the agency was if we 
uh, took a tick, troops in contact. If shit happened, shit hit the fan. You know, my job was just to make sure that <laughs> I did my part to make sure that not only my ass, but my, my brothers got home safe right. at all cost. And I mean at all fucking cost. And that's what we'll do, right? Because not only am I losing a brother, right? That person might be, you know, what else, what else is, if, if this person goes away, what are they losing? A daughter, a wife. You can't, you have to have that mindset that, and that mentality and that drive that it's like, look, motherfucker, it's, you've done it in the ring. It's you and me. It's you or me. Only one's going to come out. And I mean, like I tell people, you know, the SEAL teams, recon, SF, all, don't bet against this motherfucker because we've been outgunned and overmanned. The thing is, it's, it's the will. The will to succeed. I have a lot to live for. And it's, you know, when you get in battle, is, is it scary? Fuck yeah, it's scary. I mean, people get nervous. You know, you can't, un, you can't unpull that trigger once you pull it. Um, you can't unpull a knife out of somebody. You can, but, you know, there's damage done. So, you know, you have to train hard to analyze, assess, and execute um, to the best of your ability. And execute, guys, you know, like I said, is whatever that decision is. And you have to go with it. And you have to believe in your brothers, you know. I mean, Latrell, all these guys, all these guys that people think are heroes, they are heroes. They're my friends. And the one thing that keeps people going is I just think the will to, to survive and Family's a big one. You know, all these guys that I know, they have families. And, and this is how I look at it. You know, if I get into a fight in the street or, you know, I'm over in Afghanistan or Iraq or Yemen and, you know, I've been in a lot of these places, a lot of shit happens. I just think it's, it's not only, you know, the training that you have, but it's the will to who wants it more, right? Like, I want to go home to my wife. <laughs> I want to go home to my kids. And I want to make sure that my brothers go home as well. And I, and I think the difference between people that are willing to go to that level is I will do anything. Every, everything that you talked about though, right now, even though we've been talking about mm -hmm. combat, mm -hmm. you've got all these great motivational programs that you're mm -hmm. doing here yeah. back in the States, in yep. the civilized areas, but these are just people that are trying to make a difference in their life. A lot of that same motivating factors are still there. You're damn right, sir. But, but that, there is no life or, or death situation. But at the same token, how many people are truly living nowadays and how many people are just existing? Exactly. That's what I was going to say. How oh. many people, and that's why I do these courses and why I put so much passion in it because most people go through life existing with fucking vo blinders on, right? Yeah. Just put a carrot in front of me. Let me just, let me do my job, right? And it's funny because people always ask me, what keeps you up at night, Ray? What keeps you up, right? I, that's the question I get. Is it, is it money? Is it, um, you know, being short with you with your smart ass answer comments? Is it, you know, what is it? And I'll tell you what it is. Being average. The fucking fear of being average in anything I do keeps me up at night. I don't want to be a guy that, and, and listen, some of the greatest men I know in the world, my grandfather got up, he served his country. Um, he wasn't a special forces guy. He was a plumber. He busted his ass and he's one of the greatest men I know. But he wasn't average to me. He was an amazing human being. He loved what he did. So my job, what keeps me up at night is I just, this glass is never going to get fucking full. And people like us understand that. Like a lot of people are like, yeah, that little glass, I'm fine with it. No. <laughs> and that's what, and I don't know if you're born into it. It comes with pain, you know, because it's funny. You always, all everybody says, oh, you inspire and you motivate. No, I don't. I resonate with people through pain. I have had every type of pain dealt to me that I can. Physical, mental, emotional, social, spiritual, and sexual pain. Don't want to get into that. It's happened. It's okay. So what do I do? I try to find out what triggers people from pain. What is your fear? What scares the fuck out of you? If I don't have the answer, I'll find someone who does. And what I do is I use fear as fuel. I mean, when you get into a fight, like, go skydiving. I still still get tingles in my stomach. I still get nervous. When I kiss my wife, sometimes you still get nervous. You want to try a new move on her. You get into a fight. If you're going, you, dude, the adrenaline pumping through you, right? If if you're not scared, something's fucking wrong with you. But I tell men it's okay to be scared. But what sets us above the rest is, I will do anything, you know, within the good realms yeah. of being a man to do that. I will, you know. I walk into a room, I want to be the guy that outworks the fucking worker bees. I want to be the guy that's like, holy shit. You know, like I got my job with Bedros Cooling. I showed up two fucking hours early for a job interview. He's like, we got lunch at three. I'm like, nope, we can just go right over here. 
I, I, I got my, my four questions I need to ask you. And I just, man to man, looking right across the, I don't need a fancy dinner. I don't need none of the shit. And I wasn't the only SEAL that he was recruiting. And this is how my interview started with Bedros Koulian. Imagine I'm, you're hiring me. to, You're going to train me. Ready? I'm not the biggest, the strongest, the fastest, the smartest, and I'm not going to make you the most money. And he looked at me and goes, Ray, I don't know how many interviews you've been on, but this isn't fucking going well. But the one thing my dad taught me in life, the but, nothing matters till the but of the question when it's in a positive manner. But no one will fucking outwork me. And I, as God is my witness, if you tell me to bring a shovel, I will bring a shovel, no questions asked, because I know you're a good man. And he went, you're fucking hired. That was, that was my job interview with Bedros Koulian. And like, you know, there's bigger, faster, stronger, younger. It doesn't matter. I will find a way. My, my, I will get it done. I, I don't know how. I don't know when. I don't know. What, but it will get done. You had the theme you said at the very beginning of the interview. More people need to be punched in the face. Yep. Okay. At that moment, there is either the fight or flight. Yes, sir. Syndrome. And which one are you going to choose? And you're trying to steal more fight? That's what you want them to do. I mean, they, I mean trust me, I, that's what I want them to do. Yeah. Competition. Yeah. You better have that. You better have that instilled at you. That uh, the moment they hit you, it's like, oh, you want to hit me? I'm going to hit you this much harder. Oh, yeah. That many more times. So, yeah, yeah no, I totally, totally agree. It's, you could, you could apply this to competition. You could apply this to life. It's, uh, Yes. And you know, I, I want to touch on one thing. This isn't part of it, but there's a word that gets thrown around a lot in the wrong context. It's the word hero. Hero, right? Oh, I My idea of a hero is someone that does something because there's two types of people, selfish or selfless, right? So can a hero be a mom who has three kids, whose husband left him, who works two fucking jobs, who busts her ass and gives everything she has? Yeah, that's a hero that's to a me. That's a hero, you bet. Right? People that are running to danger when people were running away, right? We see acts of it. Police officers, firefighters. I love them. The greatest commercial is, again, okay, sorry for interrupting. No. But the greatest commercial, the big dust cloud that is coming, and it shows all the civilians running out. And, they're, and it shows military running in. Running in. And the whole caption is, which way would you be running? Yep, exactly. <laughs> that, and, is, that, that speaks volumes. And that's what I think people need to, like I said, look in the mirror and, and you know, because... And I love the, you know, like when this whole damn pandemic hit off and, you know, everybody's like, thank God the nurses are, and I love the nurses, but the nurses were getting like $12,000 a month, a week. I was like, that's awesome. But what I was thinking about was the fucking trash man who's still working and, and, you know, the military people who aren't getting raises, they're still doing it or, the you know, mail, the mail's still being delivered. That's right, man. I mean, I appreciate it, but heroes, there's a lot, you know, we just use heroes in the wrong way. Social media people that like show up half naked or are doing stupid shit aren't heroes to me. Heroes are people that do things and they want nothing in return. And I'll tell you, man, there's a lot of fucking heroes out there. And I just think, and that's why I love these podcasts because I tell people, man, if you're, if, you're, if you're a single mom or dad and you've got kids and you're busting your ass and you've got a goal and a dream, dude, just you're a hero. Do it. Make it happen, you know? And you don't have to be, my point is, is Navy SEALs aren't just, heroes you know it's like there are so many people out there that are doing heroic acts and i just wish more people um got credit for it you know what i mean like every time i see a law enforcement officer even when i get pulled over by a cop right turn off the phone i put my hands out the fucking thing he's like oh this isn't your first time sir i've got a weapon it's in this condition even when i'm getting a ticket hey i appreciate your time thank you the guy's like what i'm like i appreciate it you know thank you for doing what you do yeah guys like you you know i i don't i'm not gonna get you out of this ticket nope you don't have to. You got your ear backwards. Yeah, I lost it again. Holy fuck. We got to get you a fuck. <laughs> so that's my point, and I love what you're saying. But might, <clears throat> might, well, you draw a little diagram here. Holy shit. There, Ray. Ears this way now. Which way? As you got it. You got it now. Just go with it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Which ears on wrong? So I, my point is, is I applaud all you people out there that I consider heroes. Thank you. No, I mean, uh, there's a lot of different, as you said, a lot of different types of heroes that, mm -hmm. that could take place. But even then, just people that set your goals. I mean, they, okay, don't don't look, don't even look at the, the hero plateau level. Yep. If people are not happy with themselves, they're the only person that is going to make that difference. As we said before, yep. look in that mirror. Well, people swing for home runs all the time. That's great. But ball games are won with singles, bunts, doubles. Yeah, exactly. You, 
I'm, Consistency. I'm, I'm a big advocate. You've seen you've seen me over the course of the last two days. You've always seen me with paper, yep. and pencil, oh, yeah. because I'm always making notes on this. I'm making notes on that, and that's why I think it's really big. Is taking out that piece of paper yep. and writing it down in black and white. If you, I'll use my son again as, mm-hmm. as an example here right now. I, you know, he he did not do, do well his sophomore year in, in wrestling and stuff like that. He uh, he thought, what does that dad, dad know? Kind of like what we were talking mm-hmm. about before, the, the burning bush. Yep. Yeah. How, where, where, to get, where did they get their inspiration from? What does dad know? Yep. I mean, I, and, but I had to have other people come in yeah. and to help to inspire him because I know that he's not going to listen to me, mm-hmm. at, at least not at this point in time. So he, he has failure. I let him kind of mope for a little bit. I go, I break him on down, I sit him down. Okay, my son, what do you really want to achieve? And then he started telling me all the things that I wanted to hear. Yeah. I go, but now I go, now I want you to pull out that paper and pencil. Yeah. I want you to write them down and I want you to look at them long and hard. Mm-hmm. And I will leave you with this line because dad's got to go off a week work this weekend. Mm-hmm. But I want to see this, this, this list stuff like that. But I want you to look at it long and hard and I'll leave you with these party words. Be careful for what you wish for. Mm. You just might get it. Are you willing to pay the price? And see, in my opinion, you can do almost anything you want to do, but are you willing to pay the price? Mm-hmm. That price is called sacrifice. Mm. That's the thing, you, you know. What What do you want to achieve? But what are you willing to do to achieve? Exactly. Up. What you, a lot of it is, especially in today's society. How much time are you willing to take away from your friends? Right. Mm-hmm. The social outlets, you know, going to working out, and like I said, for my son, it's kind of going. You have to get up these couple of days a week with your father before you even go to school. And then when I'll be there at practice Monday through Thursday, because dad's going to be, be gone by Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but Monday through Thursday, I'll be at the practices. <coughs> I even got clearance with the, the wrestling coach and stuff like that. Do you care if I come in here to be a, a meddling parent? You're going to find out I'm here f- because I'm a meddling parent <coughs> because I care about my son, yep. but you're going to find out I, I, that I'm a very unselfish man. I will work with all the rest of your athletes mm-hmm. who want help yes there, there'll be a lot of that they'll say but actions speak louder than words amen I mean, be successful is a very lonely life it is oh it is a very lonely life and you, you, you there's a lot of times that they don't want you to succeed because if don fry succeeds and i don't i might be i, I think of myself as a failure in the process. You, your failure yes. yeah so it's kind of like as Don started to succeed, I may have tried to grab him and say, "Hey, Don, let's." <laughs> I'm going to try to pull him back, and that's that is that's the tough part. There are sometimes you have to break free. See, some of the most successful people I've met, like I'd be like, let's say, like say, let's go back in time. You're at the top of your game. You got one of these, right? Yeah. I walk up to you respectfully because I ain't going to just walk up to you and I say, "You know what, sir? I'm a huge fan of you. I've respected you for years, but you know what? I fucking want that." And then what would you say? Well, fucking come get it, yeah. right? It's not it's not disrespect, right? I. No, no, you know, no. I want to go one on one with you wrestling. Let's come get it, brother. And that's, I think that's what a real champion, you know, in, in life, like, hey, come get it. Like, Bedros Cooley told me that. He's, where do you want to be in five years? I want your job. He's like, well, come get it. I'm not going to be here. I'm going to be somewhere else. Yeah. Come get it. <laughs> Take it from me. Yeah. If you think you're man enough, I love it. And I, yeah. That's what, yeah. We need more challenges. We oh, need yeah. more people, but you, you want more. Not only just that challenge, help give them the tools how to get there. Everybody wants shit for free these days, and nothing. I tell it's God, handouts and yeah. yeah. Nope. I I don't make a lot of money, but everything I fucking made, I earned. I worked for it, blood, sweat, and tears. Right? That's w- things I promise people. Like if you come to my courses, you will give me blood, sweat, and tears. You will be wet, cold, tired, miserable, and hungry. People are like, where do I sign? Well, you, people you, want it, yeah, but you have earned it when you yeah. get it. You've earned it exactly, yeah. exactly. So people just they just don't get it anymore, you know. They don't they don't get it because they don't work hard enough to get it, you know. And uh, you've got to you. It's a lonely life. You've got to put everything aside, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, once you get there, then you have all these friends, you know, all these friends, you know. When you're up here, but once you start going the way down, all they go those away, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're not yeah. really your friends. They're fucking group. Yeah, I know. That's- Oh, it's, they all want to slide on that shovel there real quick and be yeah. around there with all the accolades and all that. The, oh, yeah. the, the they love you when you're top there. and they'll talk shit about you when you're on the bottom. Yeah. You know, welcome. Well, success is lonely, but failure is really lonely. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I hear you. I love it. I mean, who wants to be around the loser? You 
don't know. I mean, you want to be around successful people. You want to be around strong people. Yep. You know, I, mean, I want to be around people that are better than me so I can yeah. be better. I mean, yeah. but most people, they want to be around people that are weaker than them so they can shine. Yeah. There's no growth in that. No. So, I mean, you know, if I want to learn how to be a much better wrestler, I'm going to hang out with him, get my ass kicked by a 62 year old man. Right. I have no problem with that. Right. I mean, that's okay. That's how old you are. I said it right well, this time. No, no, that, that, that was. That's that, a compliment. That, very, very <laughs> no, it didn't no, look no, like no, it, but no, no, no I mean, no. but you know, you know. No, I, what, what, what I was kind of smiling right there because it's kind of like, you know, like ha- having a couple of notes I do, but I, I keep going down. The one that keeps standing out to me is the mindset. Mm. It's kind of repetitious. That's it. But, but, but it has a, a different ending. It's kind of like, you know, the fuck it, fuck you. Yep. Attitude. That's the internal. That's my internal dialogue. My external was attack the hill. But they're also internal too. Like, you know, I'm not going to say fuck it, fuck you, but everything that I do falls back to mindset, which is the faith, believing in myself. You know, the hill represents any obstruction in life. That yes, hill. Yes, I agree. I that totally hill totally is going to be, have a different pitch. And it's going to be bigger than lower, you know, whatever. Marriage, ups and downs, right? But peaks and troughs, whatever the hell you want to say. But I don't give a shit, man. Throw it at me. And that's the thing. I, I live in Virginia Beach. We're, we're at zero sea level. I'd like to travel. I want, I want conflict. I want chaos. I want to challenge myself. I'm not going to get better. My legs aren't going to get stronger. My breathing pattern's not going to get, if I don't challenge myself versus, you know, just the guy that going through life just at a 10 minute mile pace. No. Just existed. Yeah. No, That's there, where that mindset there, 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 is, man. There, there is a lot of people, I think, it, it, well, especially in this past year that we have uh, we have endured. I don't like to even say lived it because yeah. I don't think anyone has really lived it. This is just, we've had to endure this uh, pandemic and this uh, lockdown mentality. And uh, People are comfortable with complacency. That's what the problem with the world is right now. If you want me to just hit you with something big, oh, with, no, that's I, it. People are happy with being complacent. They're just yeah, happy but, with being D minus. But people are happy being told what to do. They are. You know, and then and this <clears throat> this really is a, an eye opener as to where uh, we are as a society. Yep. People are okay <sighs> being told to wear their fucking masks, being told to stay home. You know, yep. being told come up, be in by ten o'clock. Yeah, there nobody was. You know. One tenth of one percent. We were arguing. I feel like I'm back in middle yeah. school. Yeah. <laughs> that was my curfew. I'm <laughs> fucking come home and. Yeah. I mean, nobody's arguing it. Everybody's rolling over yep. and, and taking it. You know. Yep. Be eyeing me up. Uh, you gonna fucking do something, old man? <laughs> I see you getting a fucking fire in your eye. Uh, I'm waiting on you, man. Uh, a two second quiet spot. It's like, what? Do we get sick? No. I'm Let's talk about one more aspect of, about your, you, you've always had a push up challenge. Yes. When, when did you come up with, with the, the concept and uh, what? Okay. And I, what, what do you want people to walk away with? Perfect. So, first and foremost, I have to give uh, permission to Mitch Aguiar, who is a fighter, Navy SEAL who fights. Um, he's a good friend of mine. I, get, I don't know where he got it from. I think he got it from the SEAL team, but we started off with like, I think it was 17 push-ups on the minute every minute for 60 minutes. He came up with it. It was 1,020 push-ups. And he did it once, and he gets credit for it. I have to give it to him. And I was like, wow. There's a lot of people that are like, well, I'll get on this tomorrow. I'll get on this next week. I had a lady today. She's like, I can't do that many, but next week I'll be ready. I told her, sweetheart, you're not. if you can only do one push-up, you can't do 22 next week. You just can't. It's not going to happen. But what I noticed was is that if I just started kind of resonated with people and just trying to put a message out there that listen do more do less just do like what does that mean it means just because i can do a whole lot of push-ups doesn't mean this is a dick measuring contest with guys and gals all i want you to do i call it the power hour of positivity um i've increased it we're already up to 22 push-ups now for i'm up to doing it now i've I've did 22 push-ups now last week it was 61 minutes this week i just did it with 62 minutes next week it's 63 minutes then 64 minutes for don i'm counting for you (laughs) <laughs> we get fucked up. Stomping my foot and what here. I'm doing is, is we have men, women, and children where for one hour, one hour, I don't want to talk about politics. I don't want to talk about negativity. I don't want to talk about sexual orientation. I don't want to talk about race. And yeah, we get some trolls on there. I don't want to talk about anything. All I want to do is create a group of individuals, human beings, guys, girls, white, black, purple, yellow, it doesn't matter. We have 
fathers, we have families that have daughters that are 20 months old, all the way up to we have a 63-year-old lady and a 70-year-old man. And all I tell them is, put the fuck out. And they're like, huh, you can't say that. Yes, I can. Put the fuck out in life, right? Because the push-ups have nothing to do with your physical attributes. It's about setting a goal. Goals, you bet. Right? And doing it and then journal it. I can't do 22 push-ups. I don't give a shit. Do two, do three, do four. Log it, journal it. Ray, I have bad shoulders. Fine. Let's do something else. We will, we will modify, but we will do something together for an hour. And what I'm noticing is, is people, were, I'm creating this group, this gang, this fraternal order of just human beings where for one hour or hour and change a week, people put aside their differences, their negativity, their political, social, whatever fucking they believe in. I just, I just want good people to put out and I want to create growth. Is this, is this, okay, sorry for interrupting. Is it always in a, in a group setting or are other people at an individual basis do this? Some do it individual. Because I go live on Instagram on my okay. Ray Cash Care account and literally what I do is I, I let one person come in for 22 reps. I let them say something, then I get them off. I get another person on. So I had 62 people join me today. And it started off with like three or four of us, and now I've got a list of, can you get me on? Can you get me on? Can you get me on? I don't play fair. Well, I do. If you're a woman, I put the ladies on first, and then if I know you real well, I'll put you on. Then after that, I just start, you know, Mr. McGowan at closing my eyes and pushing buttons. And we're making a difference. Guys are calling me. Their wives are, look, we had a lady who lost 50 pounds. She's been doing this for me for a couple months, right? That's great. She feels sexy about herself. I said, hey, good. Dress up, girl. Yeah. Right? Husbands are saying, thank you. My wife is giving me more sugar. She feels better about herself. Men, you know, young and old, I want to be a Navy SEAL. Stop telling me you want and go need. Need it. Do it. I want to be. I, I want a 12-inch dick. It ain't happening. <laughs> it's not happening. I'm sorry, but it's not. Want and need. People need this in their lives. They need a, the power hour of positivity um, where we're just creating just a great message. And that's... Let's, we got this, right? Do more, do less, just do. And people are like, what's that mean? And I love it. I, I keep telling people that. I don't give a shit if you can do one, if you have to do squats, if you have to do, I'll have a paraplegic on there and I'll have him blink in his eyes. I just want you doing something. And that is not a dig. Just create movement. And we have people of all ages getting on there. And then what they're doing is they're friends now and they're meeting each other and they're wearing my 1200 rep shirt and this shirt and me versus me and all my gear and attire that I have on my website. And I love it. And I am going to continue to do this until I fucking break. Because I'm making a difference in the world, one human being at a time. And that's what everybody needs to do that. You said that, that the keywords are making a difference. And again, it, it could be a, it's something very subtle, it, 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 individual. It could be something, you know, yep. massive. Yeah, but you're making a positive difference, though. I, I'm, I, I'm, do, I'm doing a bunt. I'm, do, I'm bunting every week with each human being. You know, it's not... A, you know, it's not like I'm saving the world or anything, but I'm just making people build confidence in themselves, right, with everything. I mean, a lady 63, she just had her some type of replacement on her. She started off doing shoulders. Girl, I, I, with all due respect, get on your knees, girl. And guys, I'm like, come on, guys, let's be professional. Ladies, get on your knees. I had a guy today who literally went to about 37 minutes, and I clicked, and he goes, Ray, I'm burned out. I can't do this. I said, you shut the fuck up, and you get on your knees, and you do push-ups. Drop your ego and your attitude and let's go to work. And he, and he's like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, what are you sorry for? I'm the one that's letting you down. I've got a lot more juice in the tank. You're on complete empty. This is what I want. This is what I want. I don't know how long I could go. I don't ever seem to run out of juice because I'm insane. But I have to, I'm the conductor of it. So people that like fail, people that fall on their face. I've had a guy like fart. I don't give a shit. Yeah. So guess what? It's what fitness is. Fitness isn't taking a picture and then using these filters that make me look six foot tall like you guys. Fitness is, I, I cuss, I sweat, um, I grunt. Some guy was like, God, you must make a lot of noise when you fuck your wife. I'm like, yeah, I guess I do, but I, I don't care. Ask your wife, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Now, who's, who's the old master sergeant, the 83 year old? Oh, that's uh, Mr. Julian. That guy's great. Yeah, man. he's 86 years old. And he goes to the gym every damn day. Um, and he just, it's funny. I try to get him to say, but he's like, I'm not going to say that word, but um, I'm making his shirt up that says, eat your oatmeal. He swears that eating a bowl of oatmeal every day is what done it. That's done it for him <laughs> that and he, but he will, I mean, he demands respect in the gym. Like 
hey, you know, somebody had their head, hey, turn that shit down, it's too loud. Don't, don't ever bash oatmeal in front of me. If you actually go out my vehicle right now, you'll see I actually carry a, a breakfast container. I'm gonna send that you has oatmeal. I'm gonna send you a shirt. It says eat, eat your oatmeal. I'm gonna send you guys some shirts. I have some shirts being yeah. made up. Yeah, but and and that's the thing. Mentors can be mentored, right? Um, motivators can be motivated. Mister, Ju- people are like who motivate you? Eighty-six year old guy. They're this like guy's you. Awesome. You want you want other motivated. Okay, if you want to be successful, surround yourself with successful people. Damn right. Okay, if, if that's I'm, I'm a big advocate. I go. Oh, Rocky Balboa, Sylvester <clears throat> Stallone is the set of the best, and Rocky won. He goes, if you hang around with a bunch of coconuts, you're gonna be a coconut too. You know, he says you gotta <laughs> hang around better class <laughs> kind of people. You know. So I mean, but, but going back to the classic, I'm thinking, even though that was probably a lot of people did thought that was just a comical line. It actually, it had validity to it all. Yeah, yeah. And I'll tell you, he's eighty six, and he puts, he does, man. I, he is the definition of putting the fuck out in the gym, and he uses heavy weight, and it works yeah. for him. He I mean, he's doing shit I can't even do, and he's just like, he can't hear. Fuck, you got to scream at him when you talk to him, and he's this nicest man in the world, and he just every day he's in there. I'm like, when are you not going to be in here? He's like, when I'm dead. And he wears a mask because he's like, listen, I'm old. The last thing I need to do is get sick. Roger that. Yeah. He's, but I think he wore mask before that. He's just insane. But he he won't work his legs. But he's like, hey, fuck you. I'm 86. I'll do what I want to do. But up <laughs> but up top, whoo, boy, yeah. I tell you what. He's, but he's those, those are those are mm. in, in people that motivate you. Yeah, they, 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 they would motivate me as well because it's somebody that is older that uh, they're still doing it. Mm. They're working that body and they're working. That mind, you have to have both. Well, I'm not impressed, and I don't get motivated by people that just have material things. It's the, it's the internal, right? I mean, it, it, he's a he's a warrior. Like when you when you get around him, you just know you're like, and you you know that you you know when you're around someone that's been there, and you're like, Mr. Julian, what's your background? Oh, you know, he don't talk much. He doesn't bother anybody, but he grabs that weight and throws it around, and I mean, he gets it on, and he's like, I've been doing this shit before you were born, boy. So. Yeah. <laughs> so I take tips and notes from him. I'm like, okay, yeah. he's like fitness expert, my ass. I'm like, yes, sir. you know, he won't talk like that when we're on camera, but off camera, he'll put me in my place. Well, it's like, jeez, uh, Louise, uh, Mr. Perfect. Oh, no, no, I'm Kurt, sorry. Kurt, Kurt, no, I'm Kurt, sorry. Kurt Hedy, if you yeah, professional. Kurt, like. Kurt Hedy, yeah, but no, I'm, I'm Paul Orndorff. Oh. Mr. Wonderful. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, Brad Reagan's broke me into pro wrestling. Brad's a great guy, but they're buddies, you know, they're hunting buddies. And, you know, I talked to Paul Orndorff a couple of times on the phone. He called me boy, you know. I was 40-some years old and, you know, three-time world champion. He called me boy. <laughs> and I, yes, sir, yes, yep. sir, you know. Yep. I had, uh, I sucked it up. I thought it was great, man. Yeah. I thought it was great, you know. Yeah. Everybody needs to be put in their place. That's my motto, and there's always a mantra, and there's always someone out there to do it. Like, yeah. oh, really, Sonny? Yeah, okay, you know. <laughs> we all have to have our goals. We have to have, we have, to have our mentors that we look up to and yep. to inspire to. I mean, it, you, life, is, life is a challenge. That's right, and the, more you, and the more you make, the more you give back. That's my, that's my new th- Not the more you make, the more you take. The more you make, the more you, you give back. Give back to your community. Time is the biggest thing that you can give someone, right? That's what I try to do. I mean, money's easy. If you have money, it's yeah, easy to go, here, here's right, a check. But yeah. could you imagine Leave me alone. Here's if money. there's somebody that wants to learn from you guys and you're like, you know what, come to the gym, I'll give you. You can't put a fucking, I mean, I know what the price, what it would be. for. It's very expensive, but doing that, me, I motivate a young man right now for free. I went down to see him for his birthday. Right. He didn't pay me a dime because I believe in him. Right. And that's when, and when you do that, hopefully he's going to carry that tradition on, right? Because traditions can be broken if they're bad, but carry on that great legacy. So I'm, I told him, when you become a Navy SEAL, and he will, you better find somebody that's as hungry as you are, if not hungrier, and do the same fucking thing yeah, I did. It, yeah. With no money, no recognition, just get it done. Okay. And that's it. Again, that's, but that's, that's to get bring that, that male role model. We need more male role models. We need more better, better male role models. Yes, sir. That help to uh, challenge us, to help us. To inspire us. Yes, sir. So I agree. Well, that's the thing. Don't don't make a difference in somebody's life. Make a positive difference. In make an impact. Life. Yeah. Boom. Love a it. Positive impact. Yes, sir. I mean, I, I can make a 
negative impact on you. All you know, I can tell short jokes for fucking all day long. You know, shit. <laughs> dick. <laughs> dick. He's I, such a dick. I, you probably a short. Fucking dick. world champion's a dick. I everybody ever say that. He's picking on me. He's gonna take my lunch money from me. Gotta get my referee shirt back out. Oh again. my god. I know. That's that's a technical foul over here. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Ray, any other? Major projects that you're in works, or how can people find out more about you? Yeah, that's great question. Media outlets. So, uh, um, pro- programs that I'm doing, um, you can find them all if you go to at raycashcare.com. Uh, excuse me, www.raycashcare.com, or I'm on Instagram at raycashcare. Uh, and as far as my programs, we talked about it. I do. It's called the Squire Program. We put a couple courses on a year in Chino Hills, California. Fathers and son. It's the ultimate bonding experience. Or you can have a male role model in your life who can help. Men between the ages of uh, young men between 12 and 16. It's about a 14-hour course that we put on. Um, and then lastly, um, we're doing LTD. Myself and Steve Eckhart, he's a filthy Marine who I love, one of my mentors. We you, go to a couple... You say he's a filthy Marine? Filthy Marine. I always <laughs> say that with my Marines. Um, but we go, to, we go to businesses, and we, we teach them how to operate like a well-oiled machine, like a platoon, right? And the four pillars of success, teamwork, problem-solving, leadership, communication... We keep it simple, stupid, kiss, right? Remember that one? Yep, kiss, you bet. And then we're just going to focus on the four non-negotiables in life, and that is family, fitness, finances, and faith. And then we teach people that you need to have, you either, in the civilian terms, we call it pivot, right? Be able to pivot or max flex in the, in the, in the military, battlefield, business field, home field. Sometimes, especially what we're going through right now, they're all in one. So I'll give you an example. If, if I'm one of your employees and I'm a, I'm a great employee and I'm having a bad day, you can go, hey, something going on with your family, your fitness, your finances, or your faith, and I guarantee to you 99% of the time, you, can, you as, a, as a superior or as a boss, as a leader, can help them with that by just talking to a man or a woman and say, hey, open door policy, blah, blah, blah. And we teach people that, and we're making companies more competitive with themselves, me versus me. Show up early, work hard, get off late. Not this shit of, hey, I do my job, can I have a raise? No, you can't have a fucking raise. You're lucky you have your job. And what we do is we're reprogramming people and companies and men and, and to just be better. It, all we're doing is just a direct um, uh, extension of the project that we talked about earlier. So we're trying to bring it out to, to the to corporate companies, men and women, it's co-ed, and then fathers and sons. We don't have anything for just girls right now because our facility doesn't um, really dictate that. Plus, we're a bunch of males. So, but there are some women that are out there doing that same thing. So kudos to them. And, and that's what I'm doing. And that's what I'm going to do um, until I die. So I love life and I'm happy to be here. And I appreciate you guys having me. And I'll tell you, um, I want to come back. I want to come back. Um, right, and so hopefully I have, that'll be up to the I'll be taller. I'll wear my high heels. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you will. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a dick. I swear. That's three or four times. God, I'm going to get my ass kicked. But no, it's, that's what I'm going to do, sir. And I'm going to continue, whether I'm hurt or not, to just spread the, the message of just positivity. Well, Ray Cash, I'll just simply say on, on behalf of uh, Don Fry and myself, it's been uh, fantastic to have you here on the uh, uh, Toxic Masculinity Podcast. Thank you, sir. Thank you, gentlemen, for having me. Thanks, partner. Thank you. Boom. It's awesome. Now get him the fuck out of my studio. <laughs> <laughs>